First of all, traditional beer recipes around the world have used sorghum, millet, corn, maize, in other words, manioc, quinoa. In fact, quite often people say they talk about sake being uh, rice wine, but technically it's rice beer. I, how many other things? I don't know. <laughs> so how are goddesses, beer, and the entire spirit world actually related? Remember, it's only recently that we have an understanding of the microscopic world. But for the vast majority of human history and prehistory, when it came to actually fermenting those grains into the alcohol, there was the spirit world that they relied on. So we have an example of Sekhmet, a goddess who became quite uh, enraged and wanted to destroy all of humanity, and they appeased her with, with beer. St. Hildegard was the first person to write about the preservative qualities of hops. And actually, most of the earliest beer recipes did not involve hops whatsoever. They involved what was called groot, a mixture of spices. Everything from rosemary to bog myrtle and uh, pine and things, and even pepper, sometimes even tobacco, were used to flavor beer. And the, it's interesting that women who were involved in making those early traditional beers and finding those spices likely were involved in traditional medicine. And those women were then eventually accused of witchcraft. If you look at beer and all of its different facets and, and trace it back through the ages, you could look at all of human history. So if any of these interesting perspectives on beer, on ancient beer making, on goddesses, gods, and the spirit world and beer interest you, I'll be giving a lecture on November 8th at ASU's downtown campus in the Cronkite building, and I hope you'll join us.